Hi guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be making a scroll saw rose. So this one's made out of ash. Essentially what it is, is we get a pattern like that. We're going to scroll saw all of the parts out of it. So it's all many, many different parts. And then as soon as that's done, we're going to carve away, as this one's been done, we're going to carve away at the inside of all of the lines. You never ever touch the outsides until afterwards when you're just doing a little bit of sanding to round it over. But we're only interested in carving on the inside, which then gives us the drop down so it looks like uh, overlapping leaves. So I made this one out of ash. Uh, so today we're going to make exactly the same one, but we're going to uh, do it out of uh, mahogany this time. So all I've done up to this point is I've got my mahogany, I've put some uh, masking tape on it and I've cut out the rose template that I want to make it out of. So the next step will be for me to uh, spray glue that onto there and then we'll start cutting on the uh, scroll saw. This is the first one of these that I've ever made. Uh, I didn't think it was going to turn out very well so therefore I didn't uh, record it. So that's why we're going to make another one today. I thought it was going to be a really really complex job but it turns out it's any beginner could uh, have a go at this genuinely. Right then guys, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to spray uh, adhesive this straight down to it. If you were spray adhesive in most things, you'd spray on both uh, contact surfaces and then you'd get a really, really tight uh, bond. But we're not after that, we're not after it never moving. So we're just going to literally spray the paper just give that a minute to uh, tack up just, uh, then it'll adhere really well so uh, we'll give it a, a minute and then uh, we'll get it stuck down there so just making sure that you're exactly central in there you want to make sure that nothing's hanging over And now that'll be nicely stuck to that, which means it won't lift as it's going through the scroll saw. But because I've put this yellow tape on underneath, or masking tape, it means that when it's finished, I can just peel it straight off and there's no uh, glue residue left behind, uh, which on a lot of projects is a real nuisance. Right, we've got it all glued up now, guys, so it's ready for scroll sawing. Uh, just before we start... We use Pegasus uh, scroll saw blades. You can get many different ones, but uh, we found after uh, using various different ones that uh, these are the ones that we prefer. Uh, they're really good. Um, it comes in a various uh, variety of different sizes and different cuts. So you get some which are just up cuts. You get some which are uh, more jagged, so bigger spaces in between, and you get some that cut up and down, all in various different sizes, depending on what you are actually scroll sawing. So the smallest on this is a number one, uh, which I could have used on this, but um, it's a bit of a pain to get inside the uh, collets, to be honest. Uh, we need to get some quicker released ones. So instead, we're going to use a number three. Uh, it's a really, really thin blade, so it means that when we go to do the glue up afterwards, there's very little uh, gap, so this this is what they are. So the tiny little uh, blades. Good thing about scroll saws is they're not very dangerous at all. Uh, it's very very difficult to hurt yourself on them. Like push your finger against it, and it will it will cut. But it's it's not like when you're uh, circular saw or something. Right, guys. So onto the scroll sawing. So what we're going to do first of all is we're just going to cut around the outside line of the entire rows. Uh, and then after that, we'll cut the individual bits out because these lines are a lot thicker than some templates that I print out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight down the center of the black. So rather than following uh, any of the other lines, I'm just going to go straight down the center. So uh, we'll just get this lowered to trap it into place. And off we go.
As you can see guys we've got the outside shape cut out now uh, you can see I've missed slight bits going around but it's the beauty of uh, making something like this it doesn't have to be exactly on the lines because it's your own interpretation of a rose uh, if there's any professional scroll saw, uh, sawers out there uh, please go uh, easy on because I am definitely not a professional scroll sawer uh, I'm just simply showing you uh, <laughs> what I do because I think it's a really really easy uh, beginners thing for anybody to have a go at so we'll get on now to uh, cutting the rest of the uh, petals out, not leaves.
Right guys, as, soon, as you can see, we've got all the uh, uh, individual petals uh, scroll sawed out now. Uh, so what I've done is, I've done a printout of the original template because it just makes it a lot easier to be able to set up the pieces. Uh, so uh, let's put it together and move on to the next step. So now, uh, now we have it to this uh, stage. Uh, the idea now is, as I showed you on this, so the outside of every single one of these, we're going to leave. So what we're essentially doing is taking away, taking away from the inner sides, so it gives you these scallops. Uh, and if you look at the detail in the leaf, you can see that they're actually coming out and swooping away. So that's what we're going to achieve now with the Dremel. Right, so uh, now we've got us uh, cut all bits. So we've got various ones. We've got these extreme ones. I'm going to start off uh, with this one because I want to take a fair amount of material away to start with. So we'll start with the extreme one there. You've got various ones, but I'm going to go for that one. And then what we'll do is we'll finish it up with an original. So it's just a lot less coarse. And it means that when I finish it off, it's just going to give it a really nice uh, uh, finish so I can just sand it and get all the uh, edges beautiful. Uh, so, on to Dremelin.
customer. Customer. Right, as you can see, guys, I've got the first bit done. Um, there'll still be more refining to be done on this. Uh, I'll go back to it maybe uh, once, twice more, just to refine the shape as we go. But you can see what we're trying to achieve. So we're just scalloping out to make it look like the petal. The really important part of it is, because we're gluing all this back together afterwards, we need to leave at least a at least a five mil uh, flat edge at the bottom so we can glue it all together and it stays but uh, as we'll carry on now we'll just do the rest of the petals and just scallop them out and then when it goes back together it gives us a beautiful like rose shape Right, that's another piece that's like initially shaped. Um, this is becoming more problematic than usual because obviously I'm trying to do it and keep it in uh, film, so it's not as uh, it's not as easy as I'd normally be doing it. But persevere. <laughs> but yeah, that's the next piece. Moving on to the next one.
Right, as you can see, we're already starting to get the shape that we're looking for, uh, just on the few bits that we've already done. But it's just continue in the same vein and eventually we'll get there. Right, so we've got the main part of the uh, power carving done now, so we've got it to the shape that we're pretty much happy with, so now it's just a case of refining. So what I'm going to do next is just on all of these parts where I think they need to be a little bit deeper, I'm just going to literally just put a little bit of a pencil mark. There is really very little you can go wrong with here because, uh, as I said before, it is, it's your own interpretation of what you think a rose petal should look like, really. And as everybody that knows me can attest, I am definitely not an artist. 
There's my brother in the background laughing. Thank you very much for your uh, confidence. <laughs> and in this middle bit here, I'm just going to get a thinner uh, Dremel tool and just take it down because... Uh, I inadvertently ended up clipping the outside edge of this this part of the rose, so I think I can get away with bringing that back up by just taking this line a little bit deeper and it'll just look like the ro rose flicks off. And then in this centre part here, I hope that the camera's picking that up well. Um, I could have scroll sawed it originally, just gone in a spiral, but I find uh, it's just easier to get a smaller Dremel bit and just do your spiral in the center like it'd be a rose and then just have it coming off of the point where it's joining on to the next one um i'll draw that better on when i actually get around to carving it uh but yeah it's like these bits here i would have said i'd take some away from that because the petal's supposed to go underneath the next one so it's just little uh, revision bits like that So on this as well, I've, uh, I'm going to move away from using the extreme cuts all bit, uh, and I'm going to go to their original, just a little rounded one. And then possibly at the end of it, I might go to a little sanding drum just to uh, refine it rather than doing having to do as much hand sanding. But you can come back and do this as many times as you want if you if you whittle it away a little bit more and you're like oh i'd like it to be a little bit deeper there's there's nothing stopping you just coming back and taking some more off but i reckon that i'm pretty happy with that at this point um so i'll just refine them down a little bit get them a little bit deeper because the deeper you go means essentially you're getting a bigger ridge here and then once you sand the ridge down and roll it over at the end it really really does make make it pop so we'll get on to that now Right, so we'll continue with the uh, carving. I've just cleaned the end of the uh, Dremel, uh, the cut saw bit. Uh, quite counterintuitively, the way that you clean it is uh, by burning it and then <laughs> and then uh, rubbing uh, just a uh, mild uh, wire wire brush on it. But they clean up really, really well. <laughs>
Right, so we've got everything glued up now, so it's one piece. Um, we've got everything shaped as far as I'm happy with. I will give it a little bit more sanding uh, once I've got the centre of the rows cut out, just before we finish it with uh, some teak oil. Uh, so the idea here is I literally just need to go around this centre bit, and the tool that I'm using for it is this uh, tapered rotary bit uh, from Cutsall. Uh, you can get them in extreme original and uh, coarse. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a original or coarse one, so I'm going to uh, just go for the extreme one. Um, we started off uh, with the tapered uh, flame rotary bit, which was extreme, and then we moved on to the original uh, nose ball uh, rotary bit, and these are all from Cutsall. So uh, if you're into this, honestly, give them a go because they're absolutely fantastic. Right, I'm going to crack on now. And as I've stated before, I am definitely not an artist. So if there's any point where this goes wrong, this will be it. Right, so as you can see, we've got that shaped out now. So we've just got a little bit of detail going on in the middle. I think it just makes it a little bit more interesting than just leaving it um, just leaving it blank. So I'll quickly give that a uh, blow off with the air. So now, just with uh, some uh, 600, uh, I'm just going to uh, go around and just give it a final sand before we uh, spray it, once I find my pads. There we go. It's just refining it up a little bit and we can go around and just um, mellow these edges off a little bit just to make it look more natural. You know, it's again these like white bits that are in there. Really interesting feature. Must be in the grain because it's going all the way through. So uh, again, if anybody's got any clue of what that is or you've ever seen it before, please do uh, do get in touch and let us know. Right, again, I'll give that a quick blow off. My brother's got a dirty mind. Right, so we'll get that there. And now, hopefully, it will be reveal revealed to be beautiful. I'll give it a spray with uh, some uh, tea coil. Oh, wow, look at the beauty coming out. That is absolutely stunning. It is, isn't it? 
That has proper pop the colour. I didn't think it was going to go that dark. Looking at that, um, looking at the ones that you'd made, yeah, it looked like it was going to be nowhere near as dark as this. But that is absolutely stunning. It looks like it's off the end of a church pew or something like that, you know, it's been carved in Well, it, the piece of wood is from a from a bar, isn't it? And it's uh, bars and uh, churches are definitely built out of the same. But look at what a difference the finish makes on a uh, on a piece like that. That's absolutely stunning, if I do say so myself. Uh, just let that soak in, uh, soak in for a second and I'll give it a wipe. But that essentially, guys, is how you make a scroll saw rose. Uh, so, as I've said, please do have a go at it and uh, let us know your results. Cheers, guys. And again, if you like what we do, please do like, subscribe and share because it does us a massive favour and allows us to put even more content out there. So, appreciate everybody that follow us and a big thank you to the new guys that have recently followed us. Right, take care guys, see you next time.